Doesn't he look like Wolverine, like right before they found him? Hmm. Major, like, major, major, major. Yeah, everybody else got their holiday. Us big people, us fat people. This is for us. Everybody grab your snacks. Put them in the air. Let's go. Let's go. Now this is for the fat people all over the world. The fat little boy and the fat little girl. Those ain't big bones. I don't want to hear that. We all need to recognize the fact we're fat. We eat real late and lay on our backs. Hit the treadmill. Can't do one lap. Six coast meal. I eat to that. Said it's a toast now. I'm sorry I wasn't Tay Diggs With abs and steals, but it kinda looks like I'm pregnant I know I'm fat, but I don't have a problem with it In fourth grade, my uniforms was made custom fitted You used to lock me in that room with the treadmill One time I actually got on it to see how it feels Almost died, yep, almost passed away Then you opened up that door and I looked in your face You had your camera phone out with the flash too While I was squirming, trying to get up And I asked you for help in your response, it was so rude Ran to the kitchen, started throwing all kind of food By me, called the neighbors, told them come through Wasn't a rush, I couldn't get up if I wanted to All the squirming made me hungry, so I ate the food And then you took the whole thing straight to YouTube Hey, this is Red Band, coming to you live from Death Squad Studios For What Brian Red Band Do Man, that song is great and that song is actually what made me freak out and invite this uh, first guest to my third podcast. And I had never even met him before. I literally hung out with this guy for maybe five, ten minutes <laughs> and immediately thought he was one of the most funniest motherfuckers I've ever met. Uh, guys, give it up for... Uh, What's your, your is your real name? What my real name is Ernest Oliver. My my friends and my stage name is Boss. Boss the comedian. Boss the comedian. And you have like multiple multiple like characters almost. I I, I looked a little bit on YouTube today and I found a some hilarious. Shit. Oh, you see. <laughs> so that was sack lunch right there. You guys were just listening That's to. That's awesome. That's one of my alter egos. And then I got a Schmitty P. Schmitty P. Yeah, that's I think what I saw on YouTube and Schmitty P. Well, why don't you explain what Schmitty P is? Schmitty P, Schmitty P is a is a, a a runoff of of all the young black brothers out there trying to be pimps. Schmitty P is a pimp. He's never owned a prostitute or ever had a prostitute work for him, but he does everything that a pimp does except for he's a car mechanic. He dresses like a pimp. He walks. He talks. He dances. But he just got <laughs> cover gaskets. He just got. He's a pimp with no hoes. Nah, he never had a hoe. That's an EBT pimp. He ain't even got a baby mama. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so here's Smitty P. This is what actually I saw today. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I'll set you guys up for this video. This is this is in Las Vegas. That's a that's a picnic, man. And some friends asked me. They begged me, like, man, please put the outfit on. Put the outfit on. And they actually offered to pay me. But since they really were my true fans, I didn't take their money. So I put it on. It's about, about 500 people at this barbecue. And I just walked out. No one was ready. And people started watching. And I just I just went on. It was nothing planned. And it, it ended up great. Look at that belly. Mm, 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 mm. That looks like the picnic table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, and that's George Perez. I will get back yeah. to Schmitty P. Uh, what up, Schmitty P. Hey, I like him already too. He's like, you remember the movie Sinbad, House Sitter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the kind of foot that just comes to your house. You're like, hey, dog, you want to, you want to stay here? Hey, that's <laughs> cool. That's what I. That's the feel I want to give out, baby. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> I love it. Me and George actually, uh, just to get some business out of the way, me and George <laughs> are actually going to be in Brea, California, uh, January 22nd through the 24th at the Brea Improv. You can catch us. We're bringing some Death Squad guests to each yes. one of the shows. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, George, uh, uh, have you, you guys never met before. Uh, no, never. I've never met him. And so you're originally from uh, Las Vegas, right? Born and raised. Born and raised. How long have you been in Los Angeles? Um, I, I don't live here. I'm, I'm here on, on some business for comedy. I got invited out to do the dollar dollar room last night, the belly room at mm -hmm. the comedy store. How'd it go? Um, it was fucking awesome. Um, for a black comic like myself, I like to I hate to bring out race, but you know it's fun. I I love the challenge for me as a black comic is a is a primarily white crowd. 
unblack un un ghetto crowd. A ghetto crowd is easy work. I know I'm gonna make them laugh. I know it's gonna work. To get into a room of, of, of people who, who are not used to your lingo. I mean, it's the truth. Yeah. It's the truth. And, and you know, it, it, it felt great. Once again, it just re-solidifies why I do comedy. That's yeah. good. Hey, brother, that's good to think like that, to to want to go conquer everything. You know what I mean? That's hey, that's awesome. I got nothing but love. Nothing but love. Yeah, how long have you been doing it for? Uh, five and a half years. Five and a half years. And is Vegas a hard place to, to start comedy? Because I've only done a few Vegas shows, and it always seems like it's been a scam, a hustle. Uh, no, and no, no culture. Vegas doesn't have any culture like, like the city of Los Angeles. Um, right. any, uh, most places in California doesn't have the culture. So we don't get the build up at the comedy shows like you guys get. You guys have 30 different rooms a night, and most of them have pretty decent crowds, you know? You know, and for an open mic, 20 people, 30 people is a decent crowd for an open mic. Some of the other places. Yeah. yeah. And Vegas, I was blessed when I started. Our open mics, like I was telling you before the show, um, I started out with a good friend of mine, Diaz Mackey. He had an open mic, and our open mics were like feature shows. It was 100 to 100 to 200 people every Monday, guaranteed. That's cool. Yeah, it was, it was great. So I got a good push, and I work hard. I throw my own shows. I fund my own campaign. Um, oh, shit. He's running for president. I got my own shows, my own <laughs> campaign. <laughs> if you won the million dollar or the billion dollar mega lottery thing, what would be your f five main purchases that you would My first purchase, honest to God, uh, my first purchase would be something real exotic, something no one in the world has done, and that would be getting belly button reconstructive surgery. Oh, shit. Do you have an Audi? Do you have like I a, have an Innie, dude, and it's like hella deep, dude. Super deep? Yeah, like I can hide a, a, a fat girl in there. <laughs> And your belly? Her. Yeah. Like, Damn. my navel's wide, dude. Well, now, what is that? Now, see, it's weird because I hung out with somebody <coughs> recently that had, like, the exact opposite, where it almost looked like a cat butthole in the front of her <laughs> uh, belly. And, was, like, you could push on it and it would pop in and then, like, slowly pop out. And gosh. I was just like, what? That's not right. And then mine's just like, you know, uh, I guess, n like, the first line, the first uh, you crease know, of your how, little finger. How do you know this, dog? Because if I put my finger in my belly button to pull out my monthly lint and cotton okay. and Dorito, it, it, uh, that's, you, you never, you, you, get you get ever clean your, your belly set? button? Oh, shit, yeah. It, shit, it's, it's, I got uh, cornbread, chicken, <laughs> chicken dust, all kinds of shit in my Chicken mind. dust. <laughs> Old Nintendo games? <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> No, I mean, sometimes uh, I forget about it. Like, and I'm like, oh my God, when was the last yeah. time I did it? And I, I'm almost scared. Like, you know, like, I'm like, oh, what am I going to find in there? So, and then it's like, <laughs> oh, it's delightfully clean. But other times, like one time I had a boil in there and, oh, it, and it, it just like popped and it, it was just like cysts, like a blood and, oh. and, and, and it was just, have you guys Your ever Your neighbor was stanking like a oh, motherfucker. It yeah. smelled bad. Have you had, have you had one of those before? <laughs> no. No? And I use alcohol. You do. So you, you take a lot of maintenance. To, you, you take a lot of care to your belly. I got a lot of crevices. I'm fat, Red Man. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm fat too. And one of, one of the one of the things that was about this podcast is that I, I'm trying to lose 40 pounds in the first three months. And I started off at 228. Like, I'm supposed to be 140 is what the doc said. You Why know, are we whatever. trying to lose 40 pounds? Uh, just because I want to tr start challenging myself to do things. And that's something I've always kind of done my whole life. And I just oh, haven't shit. done it recently is trying to just little baby challenges all the time. And so I said, why not incorporate that little thing that I've never really <gasps> talked about into like... <laughs> A podcast. So when we, when I first started this podcast, I I uh, I've been tracking it. I have a a uh, scale that tracks the whole thing. It's a scale <laughs> by the company uh, Withings. And the first week uh, I did this podcast, I weighed two twenty eight. Uh, last week I weighed myself right before the podcast, and I weighed two hundred and seventeen point eight oh, pounds. Damn. So I almost lost a little over ten pounds in a week. And I cut out bread. I've been exercising, trying to do five or six times a week. So, but that seemed like such a big drop that I was really worried about this week. Like I felt like maybe this week I'm going to actually gain a couple pounds, you know, because it just seemed like too much weight. Yeah. So uh, I weighed myself right before I came here uh, today at five. Wait, no, that's not it. That's the backwards. Uh, today at six fifty four, 
I weighed 214 pounds. So you lost three more. So I lost, yeah, a little over three more pounds. Last time I was 214 pounds, I was in the sixth grade. Really? Yeah. So so you've been a little bit big your whole entire life. No, I've been fat my whole life. You're fat. That's not be politically correct here, okay? Now, is this all basically, are you saying that it's all diet, or do you think it's like, no, it's a hell, like, you know, it's a, it's a hereditary I'm, I'm, thing. I'm, nah, no one else is fat. My mom, my brother. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm just fat, dude. Like, like what kind of fat? Like, like fat. You can't play sports. Like no, sloppy no, fat. No, like, no, not sloppy fat. Like, 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 like I, 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 I'm, I'm a, I'm a cocky fat. Oh, There's okay. not a lot of this kind of fat Swagger walking fat. around. Yeah, swaggy fat, whatever yeah. you want to call. Like I challenge people to foot races and all kind of stuff. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I know, and I change gears when I run. Like I run, and I'd be like, two fourteen, two fourteen. Shit, I'm three ten right no, now. But two fourteen in sixth grade. Hell, shit, I'm forty. Dad. He weighed the same classroom he was in. <laughs> You playing dirty, okay, Mr. Yeah, Perez. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I, I went in my growing up. I was mostly fat my whole entire life. The, then, like when I hit puberty, I then lost all my weight and I was proportioned right. But then, then I went right back to fat. And then it was mostly, I think, very uh, around depression for me at least. Uh, just not having any activities or uh, going outside. You're not or, fat, Brian. You just have like a beautiful softball waist. coach hips. Yeah. <laughs> So what he's saying is your 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 hips look like a bag of wet bread shaking up. No, it's more like if I was a if I wanted to be a girl, I'd be one of the hottest bitches around. Yeah, he has like, <laughs> he has like that Kardashian prep kit. <laughs> 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 you have that Burbank ass. That motherfucker said the Kardashian <laughs> prep kit. He do, no, he do. He has the kind of ass where you're like, why am I looking at his fucking ass? <laughs> like why am I trying to bag on this fool? You know what's great is if if I, if I go on vacation, if I go on vacation, I have that tan line thing going on, <laughs> all red and shit, red and beige. Oh no, I brown. I, I don't. I don't, go, I don't go red. I, I, I go right brown. to brown. brown. <laughs> so that's it's pretty interesting that I, I you know I've I've been losing weight. I've almost I guess lost let's see 218 to 214. That's you know math. Uh, that's what is that 19 or 14 Four pounds. pounds maybe. Forty-five to twenty-six more to go. Yeah, so something like that. Now, do, so, do wait, you smoke you went from more? Two eighteen to two fourteen. Two twenty-eight. Oh, okay. To one or two fourteen. So that's what. Yeah, How, 14. 14. 14 pounds. Sweet. Do you smoke more? Like, are you more agitated? You lost a whole half ounce. <laughs> you know what's crazy is that if you look, think of like a pound of flour, like how big a pound of flour is. And I lost 14 of those in three weeks. Where does that go? Does that just like go into your poop or does it like sweat out or does it like a mo- little bit of everything? Or do you- It's like the cartel. You lost it, eh? Like- <laughs> oh, no. My, my shit comes out watery, so I don't think it's coming out. <laughs> I just think it's your intake and then your body's just like getting rid of shit faster. Because I remember like when I was just eating real good and drinking water, like Coke stays in you and you piss a lot more and you shit a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was weird. The other day I opened up and it just like fell out. Like it was like, you know, the World Trade Center when it just fell, like it just came out. Like it was nothing, no pushing. Loose booty, Brian. Loose booty, Brian. No, it's not loose at all. I very strong. I could snap a pencil. I could break a coat hanger. (laughs) Ah, He he jacked you, dog. (laughs) Those are the kind of shits when you like go to wipe, you're like, what? Only once? What the fuck? Right. Uh, so your belly button being so deep and all, uh, w- w- did you ever find anything like legit, like disturbing in there before? Like a bug? Has a bug ever made a nest in there? Or <laughs> I had a praying mantis. What <laughs> fuck said? Did I have a bug? I had a praying mantis that had tattoos. <laughs> he had a praying. He was mantis hiding from that, child support. My mother said he had a praying mantis with tattoos. I fucking love it. Oh, oh, see, oh, that's fat people problems. You see that? I almost took the jeer out, dog. <laughs> I almost took it out. I hope y'all didn't see that. <laughs> I, I think I might have got it. So, are you living in LA now? Did you make that transition? No. Um. Um. I have. I have. Uh. A, a home base in Las Vegas. I have a group home. I have a print shop. A group shop. home. Yeah, foster home. Oh, I got okay. that. I, got I was a, a foster di- kid myself, so oh, I, have, shit. I have six. Six, six nice young men I'm in charge of. That's funny. You should say, man, I'm a foster kid. I got a new parent every Christmas. 
and that shit. And <laughs> what, what Groupon did you so, get? Groupon, yeah, dude. <laughs> Boys Town. <laughs> hey, Boys Town. <laughs> Father Flanagan. That's fucking crazy. So have you seen the movie Beast? Yeah. That's a tough shit right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was cool, man. It ain't. I don't really have the, you know, I didn't concentrate on the sad parts of it. I mean, actually, believe it or not, man, it, it saved me more than it hurt me. That's you know crazy. I mean, I, I graduated. I got some college under my belt. I got a social work degree. That's you know, and I'm up. still, nice. I'm still, quote unquote, tune, in tune with the streets in the world. You know, I'm not depressed. I don't, I don't believe, you know, I, I fight depression. I'm not going to let it win me so yeah. have you ever had a, a, a time in your life though where it just seemed almost too much oh yeah plenty of times yeah i'm human that shit but it's i, I rather i rather conquer it than let it conquer me i i've lost one time and let it let it get the best of me my emotions and i vow never to let it go come back again what is so do you think marijuana helps you with all that do you think the or do, is there that now, you meditate I, or i'm gonna tell you the truth bro i enjoy smoking reefer so i smoke reefer yeah. That's it. I don't. I don't have it. Oh man, it helps me eat. It helps me sleep better. I can tell you. In in the thirteen years or so I've been smoking, I uh, I can't tell you. I've caught the munchies. I've been paranoid. Any any of the stereotypical things. I, I enjoy reefing. That's it. Yeah, I do coke because when I do coke, I'm so coked out. <laughs> I fucking forget my problems. You do? Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you, but don't you get scared of, with getting too coked out that you're going to like have a heart attack or like do you ever, does that ever take you to a dark side? Where no, like look, I, like I go, everybody goes to the dark side, but like I go there like chilling. Like, you know what I mean? Like I go there with like, hey, the cool guys here, like they don't fuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. He like said, yeah. nah, but you know what? I had a fucking. I, I had yeah. the craziest coke dream because I was coked the fuck out of my house. And then, like, I fell asleep and I woke up in a zombie land, but it was coke land. And people would walk up to you and stab you with, like, little picks and it would just coke you the fuck out. Whoa. So, whenever, like, they noticed Whoa. you were like, hey, you're coming down, huh? Beep, 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 beep. And it was fucking weird, dude. <laughs> dude, if I had a dream about coke land, it would be like cups of hot cocoa walking around. <laughs> Coca Cola? It would rain whipped cream into the cups, oh. dude, and I could drink it. If you do coke, you could imagine all that. <laughs> Now you 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 I, I love this video I saw of you uh, doing a taste test of those uh, potato oh, sweet potato. Patty pie. LaBelle. Oh, shit. Yeah. Now th what this this is I've been seeing this pie come out of nowhere recently. Like what is the deal? Is this just something that everybody right. on Facebook let start? Me, let me tell you how it happened. I was you know it's, everyone has Facebook. You see those videos that pop up. I'm a comedian. One day I seen the Patty LaBelle video, Patty LaBelle video, and it was a guy, <laughs> fat guy like myself on there. He's eating a pie. He goes, Ooh, Patty, 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 this pie. And he starts singing. And I was like, Ain't no damn way that damn pie made that man start singing. <laughs> so I went and got the pie and I ate it. And I chewed it and I said, Mmm. Started singing? Yeah, no. <laughs> not at all. My, play the video. Let him hear what he did. Let it. Man, I'm not hating on him and his choices. But we're going to see what this pie really do. That's a real so good cut. I'm here in the kitchen. Just picked it up. I want to see what that pie do. You know, we're we about to see what it do. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Now, this motherfucker cold. And I don't like my pie cold. But I'm going to eat this motherfucker cold today. Okay. <laughs> First off, okay, it came out pretty neat. Okay, we're going to see what Patty LaBelle really got going on here. Okay, America. Your girl stronger than you, nigga. She can't hold all this, nigga. This motherfucker didn't make me seem nothing. <laughs> I think there's two videos playing, but yeah. let me get back to that. He said, I, when I bit it, I said, this motherfucking pie didn't make me seem nothing. And then I proceed to say, my thighs ain't clapping. My titties not jiggling. <laughs> Who's in the back? Are you are you in a Planned Parenthood waiting room? No, no, that's the other. <laughs> that was the other video. That, that, that was another was one of my yeah. videos playing uh, in the background. Uh, like, Who's saying pick that cherry fucker? <laughs> <laughs> pick that cherry fucker. But that's funny. That, but that motherfucker. I thought it was gonna. Okay, hold on. <laughs> now, Some outrageous pie. Jesus, no. Pie. Oh like shit! But I'm gonna eat this motherfucker cold today. All right, so let's get it. Okay. First right. off, okay, okay, America. Listen to the chews. This 
this motherfucker didn't make me sing nothing. Nothing. My stomach not humming. My thighs not clapping. My titties not jiggling. And the fat under my arm ain't making them chicken cockadoodle splat splat sounds. <laughs> this is some regular ass pop. What did it taste like? It was just it just tastes like a a a, a store bought and sweet potato pie. I've never had a sweet potato pie. You had a pumpkin pie, you had a sweet potato oh, okay. pie. Okay, same shit. No, it's not, but it is. It they fucking <laughs> loaded with sugar and nutmeg. Uh. It's Same shit, dude. It's similar. Have and you ever had rhubarb pie before? Come on, dude. Of course not. What? Of course not. Rhubarb. Uh, what? It's, Rhubarb's great. Have what you ever, the hell? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Try it out. Hey. Do a live review of a uh, rhubarb pie. I, I, yeah. Okay. You never had. I've never had rhubarb. Right. Have you ever had patties and gravy? No, but I'm, yeah. on, on, this diet. I'm on this diet. That sounds like a big ass hot pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it does have <laughs> patties and gravy to a stable near you. George, I, I loved you on uh, Sarah Weinshank's uh, recent podcast. Oh, with, dude, that with, was so fucking fun, man. Yeah, you got to make prison food. And what, what did, we talked about it on the Ice House Chronicles, but what, what was it exactly? Because it looked really good. It was bomb. I got a uh, top ramen, and then I got uh, chicharrones, Cheez Its. Uh, chili hot Fritos, bologna, and I cut the bologna up, and hot water, but like not water from like the bottle, like from the sink. It got to be ghetto water. <laughs> right. Ew. So what did, what kind of water did you get? Well, I guess Sarah Weinshank's like toilet water would be. Oh yeah, but she's like hippie clean, so it was like Whole Foods to- fucking toilet water. Oh, oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> she's hippie clean Whole Foods. <laughs> nah, but it was fun, dude. It was cool. It was a good vibe there. Yeah, it was cool. It looked good. I, I like anything with... Uh, you put sriracha in there, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. I had the, one of the things that I cooked uh, on this new diet, because I'm trying to you know eat healthy, is uh, I take a bunch of ground turkey, uh, light, very light, lean turkey, and then I mix it with sriracha oh, and, and garlic, and then I put just a little bit of manwich sauce in there, Ooh. and then... Uh, vinegar, balsamic vinegar, uh, and it—it's just—it's great. It tastes like it almost tastes like barbecue, like really sweet barbecue, like honey barbecue. Mm. I can make a mean ass rice bowl, man. I, I thought of this recipe in prison, like, like sometimes you can get soy sauce. So I took soy sauce, soy sauce, and fucking raspberry jelly and sriracha, and I put it in a hot pot. You know what a hot pot is, right? You boil water. Yeah. I put it in there, and I started cooking the bowl, and I started stirring the shit out of it. Then I cut these sausages up, put the sausages in there, and I had this white rice cooking. I put that shit together. That was like the Mexican version of prison, like Chinese. Teriyaki bowl. bowl. Yeah, dude. It was... <laughs> It was weird too. Jerky like the, bowl. the brothers kept walking by, by myself. What that shit smell good, dog? What you making? I was just like, I me no speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I had I you know all the, I I was downtown today. I did pick up some shirts and stuff, and me I too. I, I didn't see you. Yeah, I was there. Motherfucker. Yeah, I got the new shirt right here. It's, Hell yeah! It's uh, it's the, it's actually a shirt that I made a long time ago, but I redid it in a way better like quality. I did an ink discharge, but it's. Oh shit! That's the OG. Oh, That's the first edition coming back. Shit, yeah, big arm, right. yeah. But uh, quote me in. But I, I got, I, I turned down the wrong, wrong, like I took a wrong turn down a wrong alley, and <laughs> the alley got smaller and smaller to the point where I'm like, oh shit, I can't turn around. Like, there's no way turning around right now. And it was a dead end. Ended up being a dead end. So I had to start going backwards down this aisle, and I have this big SUV, and I'm just like backing up on. Fuck, uh, this with sucks. No, Fuck, with no backup camera. Yeah, beep, beep, and, nothing. And, and well, there, your truck's and, old as shit. And on the sides, it was like just like old warehouse stuff, and it was just every single uh, little, it was like little wow. like uh, like window sills were just homeless people staring at me. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> I didn't even realize, I thought it was just trash and stuff. Yeah. But then I was like, oh my God, these are people inside these like, like cocoons. Like and zombie stuff. land. Yeah, zombie land. I don't care who says, hey, downtown is nice. Fuck no. But if you if you go, hey, mom, come to my house downtown, is that happened to her? Like, yeah. she would shit herself. Straight like, up. She would, that, fuck downtown. That, yeah. that shit's not right. Listen. And those are the kind of homeless people that get mad at you. Like, yo, man, you woke us up. You ain't going to give us a dollar? Like, right. like, like, they check you for going <laughs> in this spot. The yeah. homeless man told me today, hey, hey. Give me a couple dollars. Get, hey, give you a couple dollars, boy. If you don't kiss the broad side of my ass, <laughs> do, you, do you even respond to him? Like, I've gotten to the point where now, and one very okay, very like once in a while, I'll do it. 
but like I won't even look at them. It's like kind of like those guys at the mall that try to give you like samples or go, excuse yeah. me, sir, sir, sir. <laughs> like when, when you're going by a kiosk, it's yeah. like I'm like get away from. Me. I don't. I guess I've learned like if you even make eye contact, that's that's in some situations pretty bad just to make yeah. eye contact. Well, the the strip club that I work at, remember I told you there's that bum lady that lives in our plaza. She lives at the plaza, the strip club. So like. She hits up everybody every day, and like she'll get us sometimes. So yeah, the, I do. The homeless people downtown are parking directors. They they help you park. Yeah. yeah. Does Vegas have a lot of bums? Yeah, but they're contained. I didn't mean bums. They're My contained. bad. Homeless. Shit. Same thing. <laughs> and we ain't, don't be modest. That's bullshit. That's yeah. what's wrong now. Fake ass politically correct people get on. Nah, home. because you know, to me, they're not all bums. Like sometimes I see them and I'm just like, I trip out because I seen a homeless person once and then I seen them later at a Laker game. Yeah. Oh. Like this fool got a girlfriend now. Like damn, you know what I mean? Something now he had a happens. girlfriend in. He was at work when you yeah. seen him. When I when I lived on Ohio State, uh, when I li- went, lived in Ohio on Ohio State campus, uh, all the bums would park in front of my apartment. Get out of the car, walk to the corners of the street, work, and then get back. And they're very nice. Their cars were nicer yeah. than mine. It's a hustle, too. <laughs> I, I love those ones, especially when I find out I like to pull up to them and be like, hey, where the fuck your truck parked at today? Yeah, exactly. Like, there's a guy in Burbank. He looks like uh, right at Burbank Empire Center, right next to the Wendy's. It's like a shopping mall where there's a Best Buy and shit like that. There's this guy that stands yeah. there, and he's been standing there for three years, and his sign has still said the same thing for three years. Just lost my job. Yeah, need money, you know, blah blah blah. But you're we- he's wearing like Dockers, yeah, and, and like penny loafers, and like it's a bl- iron. Yeah, it's all <laughs> iron. He's got a like a nice haircut. I'm like Jesus Christ. Just truly, get a job. True, truly homeless, truly homeless people have an authentic smell. <coughs> yeah, and their hands look like they're mechanics. They ain't fix shit. Yeah, but that tarp. Right. Yeah, I mean. Burbank has doesn't really have that much homeless people because there's not really anywhere for them to go. Yeah. Uh, it's being in a suburb and all. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> for downtown to be somewhere where a lot of money is made here in LA, I, I'm astonished at how much homelessness floats through there. Everywhere they're they're everywhere. They're not like contained just on this little section. They're everywhere. Yeah. They they are free free roamers. Yeah, it's kind of like like playing in a video game like Grand Theft Auto. They just get to go anywhere they want to. <laughs> Dude, I got tricked once by this homeless chick that like was just like like barely in the first five months of her stages of being homeless. Oh shit. Oh, yeah. I was at a bar outside smoking a cigarette and she just drives by on a skateboard and was like, Hey what's up? I like your shoes. I was like, All right. Gives me your number, calls me seven hours later. Where are you at? I'm still at this bar. Hey, come pick me up, let's blaze it. Pick her up, take her to my car within ten minutes. She's like, Hey, I'm homeless. My parents kicked me out, they're religious and she's like, Is it cool if I go to your house and just take a shower? And I was like, I'm cool. Like, yeah, they're gonna, yeah. gonna rape your ass, yeah, right, yeah, or like, is some guy gonna follow me to the crib, right? You know what is I mean? it like, like a whole trick thing. No, I've noticed that LA definitely has something called gyp- uh, LA gypsies, which are Fuck, hot yes. professional hot chicks that don't really have like house homes, they just go from one, they meet a guy, they stay at, on his couch. Or they or they they start dating and fucking and she starts spending the night every night for like months and then she'll go to the next guy and it's just like yeah fuck that yeah I know there's a lot of girls that don't have houses that live in L A <laughs> and I'm just like how are you, how are you doing this oh you're just dating somebody new every every couple months yeah that uh, that's 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 the new hustle I mean you can't get mad at it guy's been doing it forever so girls are just jumping ship. <laughs> Yeah, girls are like fuck this shit. I just need more Instagram followers so I can get sponsors soon. They're just out there, dude. That song that we opened up on uh, was fucking great. I love it. It was uh, actually awesome. You. It was brother. really thank good. Uh, do, now, do you have? Is that just a part of a whole album that you have coming out? Or yeah, I have a I have a whole comedy compilation coming out for Sack Lunch, my alter ego. Uh, um, what it is is uh, it's all comedy, um, but it's it's actually. If you listen to each song, it's all original beats, all original verses. Um, we try to not let it get too shabby so it doesn't run you off. It still keeps your attention. Um, every song, if you pay attention, you get a punchline probably every 10 seconds or so. Um, I got I got, I got, got so much, so much, so much. And everything is funny. I got I got one called Run Your Jokes that I love. Run These Jokes. Um, it's set up with a scene like me and my buddies. We're all four at the club, and we're all dressed nice. We go... They we're playing, you know, let's see who can get the girl. I go to the table to get the girls. They they shit on me, start clowning me and stuff. 
And then it just goes, ooh, I go off and I just start shooting the dozens on them. Boom, 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 boom. Because I was 14 wearing a 46. My lunchbox was a duffel bag with a zipper on it. Hey, time I robbed a hostess truck for a case of donuts. I brought them all to school. My teacher tried to make me share. I grabbed a white girl and a pencil and put it to her hair and yelled to everybody, just back away from my donuts, especially them powder ones. Touch them and I'ma go nuts. I grabbed a white and walked backwards to the door slowly. I started screaming. Don't you judge me, you don't even know me. I like to see you so walk great. a mile in my shoes. Honestly, I like to see me walk a mile too. But anyway, that's my shit. Yeah, hey man, I definitely think you have like a lot of fucking potential in the music business as well. Don't sleep on that, man. Mm -hmm. Don't sleep on that because you're natural, brother. And that's like, thank you. I feel like a basketball coach going, I see you dribble. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna pick that full love just by the way he dribbled. Dude, I want to see you. that song is a perfect example. I want to visually see a video for that exactly. thing. I think once that you make that, I think you're gonna, it's gonna change your life overnight. It is. Man. That one, I, I got I got four singles that I have picked, man, and that's one or four, and the other the other three, um, hopefully, if you ever, when I, I'm gonna leave them with you tonight, oh, yeah, and if you hear them, man, I hope you say the same thing. I got one called the the actual first song for Sack Lunch was called uh, Drive Through, and it's set up the premise is set up as a fat dude. I always go to the same drive through. They always know what I want. You know what I mean? This day I go, this lady wants to try to, it's a new girl at the drive through She wants to start talking shit. And I just let her have it. Like, you know what I want. And, you know, I want a number one, two, three, four, and five. I want all of them with cheese, you know? That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hella funny, dude. Sack lunch is something I thought of one night and it worked. I feel like that when I go to like my Connects house. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? Why are you getting the scale? I want what you have left. <laughs> this dude right here is killing me. <laughs> nah, it's for reals. I hate that shit. Like, they're like, hey, man, I need to re-up, dude. Chill out. I'm like, dude, I already gave you all the money. Come on, let's go. Yeah. You need to use my credit card again? <laughs> I'm just kidding, Brian. <laughs> I, uh, man, you know, I, I, I just had a, a friend stay over for a bit, uh, not going too deep into that. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I, I, it's funny cause I just threw away all my dishes and because well, my friend was coming in town, I hate doing dishes. I don't have a dishwasher. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a grown adult with no dishwasher. Do you have Damn. a, do you have a dish? You, you live in Vegas. You got, you, you, George, do you have a dishwasher? No, I'm old school. I got, solo. I got kids and my girlfriend got kids. Hell yeah. I got dishwasher. Yeah. I need, I see. I I need a dishwasher so bad. But so what what happens is every time I date somebody or I have a girl come over, they want to cook. And then they fill my kitchen up with all the dirty dishes. And they do that whole like, you know, I cooked, you clean type thing. And then I'll just not touch it. And so it got so bad where I was like, fuck this. I'm just throwing all this away when I got new dishes. And I had a friend come over. And of course, uh, when she left today and I just went into my kitchen, I was like, Jesus Christ, I have a whole new batch of dishes. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, buzz in, buzz in, bam, 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 bam. I seen the friend you're talking about. There's no fucking way that little shimmin' big ate a sink full of dirty dishes. This fucking buzzer is about the size of the input of the fucking headphone jack. She, well, uh, three pounds soaking wet. <laughs> she was an adult preemie. <laughs> she, uh, she, I think uh, overused dishes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> she don't want to eat off plastic. What the fuck? You can't get some disposal ones. No, have you ever done the toilet paper napkin? Like, uh, uh, I don't have any <laughs> napkins. Here's some toilet paper. And have you ever vice versa use the paper towel as uh, toilet paper? You Man, know, don't ever do that. That That's, lays your ass raw. Yeah, and it's so, so you gotta fun. wet it. Yeah, but it's so bad because you, it's bad for your toilets. You'll kill it. You'll destroy your whole plumbing in your house. Yes. George, you seem pretty stoned today. <laughs> you know what? I'm kind of stoned. I'm just cool. I, I've, I've been having a good week. I'm yeah. excited, bro. We're going to be in Brea next week. Yeah. January 22nd, 23rd. 23rd. Yeah. yeah, the only thing I wish that I, uh, I was like, fuck, why does that weekend sound familiar? And I remember it's AVN weekend, and I'm like, oh. oh. The, the AVN first, out here? Uh, no, no, in, in Vegas. Vegas. I was about but, to say, yeah. yeah. I didn't do that here, too. Do you go to the AVNs? Uh, Shit, I know all those bitches personally. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, I, I know a lot of those girls, those ladies of the night. But yeah. it's weird how recently it's turned. Porn, porn's fucked. And it like, even, like, th even this year, it's like porn uh, sponsored by Chatterbait, yeah. you know, which is like the, the biggest killer of porn. Yeah, porn's like MySpace. It's old now. You know what I mean? It's like, we're if, not on that shit no more. I, I hate to be 
all righteous and shit, but everything that was cool in our beautiful country, if you don't pay attention, is turned to shit. Everything. Yeah. It ain't just a certain demographic. All everything's turned to shit. When I, I hope I don't offend nobody, but when the when the brother from the Wheaties box turned around, I say, Oh yeah, we're in for <laughs> shit now. We're in for shit now. That's America's hero. Yeah. yeah right. That's a hero right there. And all the oh, they they just let the, the American hero, they just broadcast it. Oh yeah, that turned us to shit. Yeah, it's fucking us up. My mom is so confused. She's sitting there cross eyed, like looking out the window. <laughs> like like she's like, I remember growing up and my mom, you know, grew up pretty religious and, and uh nowadays you're you're watching all this crazy news shit, fucking yeah. you know, people getting beheaded, you know, like 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 it's over it's, religion. Yeah, all over religion. Did you grow up religious? You know, my, my parents were Catholic and uh mm. like they try to throw it on us, but uh <laughs> You know, I did grow up religious, but I got to the point where, like, my parents were like, we can't control this little fool. So they were just like, do what you're going to do. But, like, I'm not against it or for it. It's there, man. Yeah. Right, right. I feel like you, bro. I'm not against it or for it. Right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm most definitely not against it, though. Yeah, I'm not against it. Because at all the... Um, the underlining of it is all po- a positive message. It, you know, be good to each other. Blah blah blah. It just gets creepy here and there. But yeah, you know, fuck, I've yeah. seen things and, <laughs> and been around church people that have done some of the most horrible things. So it deterred my faith as far as using the church to go about it. That's all I can say. Yeah. Do you, did you follow? Do you guys been following like this whole like uh, presidential shit this year, or do you not care? <laughs> I, I just um, said we're fucked. Yeah. yeah, I'm on it all the time. I'm excited to see what's gonna happen. I am. I'm excited. Like, <laughs> like not. this year the election's gonna be like, are you waiting on them to fuck with Tom Brady or not? And at the end, you're gonna think they're gonna fuck with Tom Brady, and you're like, what the fuck just happened? No, they ain't gonna fuck with that guy. You talking about that dude with that comb over? No, I'm just scared Trump's gonna <laughs> win, and then a yeah. Mexican's gonna kill. Them and they're really gonna and, get mad and at us. that's and and <laughs> that's and, and I could tell you right now in a ghetto near you that's what we talking about yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, all right all right the homies the plug gonna knock them off that's what we call it Mexicans we call yeah, them the plug. Like, we don't, we plug. Don't, we're not gonna <laughs> talk shit or march we're just gonna be like hey where's he <laughs> hey wait wait <laughs> yes yeah. yes say it again for real say like, it again like we're, we're not gonna fucking uh what's that shit what did they say black lives matter yeah like <laughs> no we're not gonna march or talk shit we're just gonna be like <laughs> one of our cousins cleans his house and we're gonna get in that way we're gonna get shit. in and assassinate that fool not me but i just know how they, i know how mexicans from mexico are not even an american's gonna get him it's gonna be someone from over there it's gonna be a paisa Hell, super paisa. Yeah, paisa. It's a difference. Like, they got paisa and Navy SEALs. <laughs> I love this dude right here. By the way, I don't like this mic. Whoever the hell brought this mic system, don't the son of a bitch to put it in. I'll tell you. He's people. He, he went off today uh, because his microphone was popping and he went off saying like, we're not going to pay whoever set this up. You know that we're not paying you guys. Wow. And, and it's just like, you know what? It's going to be something like that. You know, he's going to, yeah. he's going to be like, what? He doesn't like my mic. He's not going to pay me. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> like it, it, it's uh here's a, uh, here's the, the whole video. I want you guys, I, cause I saw a longer version of it. I bet you El Chapo get back out and get that ass. Yeah. What, what if Chapo breaks out he you know if, if he breaks out get the fuck out of here he in mexico yeah <laughs> he getting out of giant I, I i when i went to mexico i it changed my whole view of the hispanic coach i say oh shit that's why they hustle so hard yeah, yeah they have to over there oh my god we're gonna lose that 505 billion and by the way i don't like this mic whoever the hell brought this mic system don't the son of a bitch to put it in i'll tell you these people no this mic is terrible Stupid mic keeps popping. Did you hear that, George? Don't pay him. Don't pay him. You know, I believe in paying. But when somebody does a bad job, like this stupid mic, you shouldn't pay the best, sir. <laughs> I, I like that. I, I like that. I agree with that. He sounds like an Italian open mic. Like, to to they'll pay. They don't care. They'll pay. So we're not going to pay. Just I guarantee a man, I'm you not guys paying play. for this mic. Yeah, his accent is really something, isn't it? It's like, I oh, it's chicken soup, you know? Yeah, every, every, two, every two minutes, I hear like, boom, boom. See? Anyway, I hope it's okay for you out there, but it really is. Boy, you are real. Look at that. Look up there. It's packed up to the rafters. Man, 
He's such a fucking bully. Holy he's an old school white bully. And, and, <laughs> yeah, hey, man, he's convincing them people out there, you know? Yeah, it's scary as fuck. No, he's convincing the old people. No, I asked my mom, and she, she she freaked out when I said that. I was like, "What? You, would you vote for her?" You know, and she would. Listen, I thought she would say yes. But. I remember it was a big deal that Obama was on the election table, and right now this dude has made it this far. This, this, that's what I'm saying. Our the media and our country's fucked, dude. All of us. It ain't no fucking all. It, it races. They want the black people. Hey, no, they don't want the Mexican people. No, they don't want none of us. Yeah, we well, ain't got what? no money. What, whatever they say or not, nah, we're gonna stay. Like you, you can't get rid of this. This is us. It's just it's getting to a point now where the tables are turning and people are just getting scared. Uh, yep. Did you guys uh, see this uh, video? Uh, I, I posted it on YouTube. I don't think it, it was one of those videos. I think it went around Facebook for a yeah. while of this <laughs> ex girlfriend completely just losing her mind on her. Oh, the black chick. Yeah. Brian always put on shit that's like hostile. <laughs> Check this out. No, check it out. This oh, shit I've seen this funny. one. You have seen this? Hey, yeah. he, he's good, dude. He he has a real tender dick. He just sat there and, and commentated. He's scratching his car right now. Oh, my God. That's, that's Day Day. Yeah, this Friday. <laughs> he took it right out of my mouth. <laughs> vehicle right there in the back. And then she just starts going crazy, like just breaking he, shit. She don't listen to him. Let me, let me, let me, let me di dialogue this from a black standpoint. You hear how he's talking, people? He's on probation. He's on probation, and he's about to get discharged, so he doesn't want to fuck it over. That's why he's doing this. Yeah. She just bust my window, and now she's leaving. This is the the psycho part when. She leaves and he goes out a little bit more. Court case on windows. Rear ended my vehicle. No, she got to come back and bust the right door. Rear, rear ended window. my vehicle. No, keep Four. going. More down. A nice, a nice chunk. A nice chunk. Right there. She got there. She go. Oh, bag it up. Bag oh, yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you missed yeah. it right here. Yeah. She comes okay. to the door and busts the Look. house window. He's showing the damage. Almost killed him. <laughs> She's cocky at her 2,000 bins. Yeah, why would she? Yeah, that's how crazy she what, is. Where was it at? Boston. Think she's finishing Damn. up on the car. After all the shit I've done for you, this is how you treat me, right? <laughs> oh, shit. Watch this, dude. Now, she has just smashed my window, my rear windshield. She just straight punked this dude. <laughs> Jesus. That's what you got to do now, though. That's what you have That's to do. You have, you have to record to it. Oh, like, yeah, you have to record it. You know what I mean? But if I, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, hey, it, hey, thank Apple for that because we got out of a lot of stuff because of that. Yeah. Like, you're being recorded. Damn, and the cops are, do you have the tape? Okay, see you later. Yeah, even the cops, though, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, I've been in situations like that before with, with crazy girls. I had no, one gosh. time I was with a girl in college and this other girl uh, didn't like that. And so she smashed my whole entire, like all my turn singles and like, like my lights and stuff like that. Uh, I've been, you know, tons of crazy ex stories. Do you think there's a psychological point to that? She's like, you're not going to turn no way. You're staying with me. <laughs> yeah, you can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> now, the crazy bitch stories all day. George, I mean, have you had, what's your ultimate crazy bitch story? Have Dude, you fuck. I'll give you my most recent one. Oh, no. Yeah, like, you know, I figured it all out, but there was this fucking chick that was texting me and sending me pictures from me Outside of my window, she'd take a picture of me asleep in my room and just start texting me like, hey, motherfucker, you're never going to leave me. But this was like three years. She would always check in and just do guest spots. She would just like, get <laughs> for real, she would only like try to scare me for like fucking three days out of a month. But I'd be like, what the fuck? And like one time I had to mow my lawn for like two months and she fucking texted me, hey, your fucking lawn looks all ratchet, bitch. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? This bitch was at my house. Yeah. It, that's the worst is when it you, it goes from like what the fuck this was somebody that just yesterday was like yeah. i love you and you're the you're the greatest person in the world and <laughs> you know here's the keys to my baby and, and then <laughs> and then the next thing you're like what the fuck this person's alive today no you're so funny 
<laughs> I always like to, to use the vision of when you first get into a good relationship, you watch the lady, she sleeps all good, look at her. I want to wake her up with a little dick. <laughs> now you now five we five years in, not even that long sometimes, and you're looking over and you're like, look at this bitch here. I just want to kick it in the, in the right there where her neck meets her shoulder. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> World star. Pow. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> World star. I uh do you think that it's uh not only is like the Jenner and the but the, like the biggest problem with is is like the Kardashians because you know like today uh, the, the kids I'm, now I sound like an old person but it seems like we're I mean when was the last Marilyn Monroe never had a a a porn tape where she's oh, getting yeah. fucking or even fucked a reality like, show or a reality show yeah. where we know their family so well that fuck and it's fucked up because it's like they have their own reality show and they even outside promote they're like on CNN we're gonna find out what Cl- Lamar told Chloe like he didn't tell that bitch shit <laughs> right. that fool's still there what did he say is like they're such fucking whores but I I'm not mad at them because they're getting paid dude. Yeah. If you're the dumbass to tune in, I get mad when I stream by the channel, my remote signal doesn't hit and it stops on that fucking channel. <laughs> I get so fucking pissed. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky. I haven't really watched any of it. So, like, I don't know all the Kardashians. Yeah. I only know Kim because of Kanye, really, and the, yeah. porn, and the sex tape. And I know more about this Cat and Jenner because I've been stuffing it down my face with it. <laughs> but let me, let me tell you. From the black point of perspective of oh, there. shit. We, 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 us brothers, we know about the Kardashians because we all got a dream of fucking one of the little bitches and getting some of that money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Jackpot. Get, yeah, it's getting harder now, though, because, like, now they're just fucking people that got more followers than them. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, That's like, so to true. them, they're like, oh, he only has two million followers. Can't Have you it. seen the Instagram whore bitch that got the fucking show? No. No. Oh, they got a little chick, dude. I think the rapper dude game was dating her. She's hot, but they got a whole show. The family got a whole fucking reality show off of posting pictures on Instagram. Damn. That's I say, nuts. dude, they're killing it. So all the little bitches now are going to be making mutt videos in the bathroom. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you could do it, do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't be like, hey, this is what I do every day. I, that's like what cops go through because they have a camera on and you get to see what they do all day. Yeah. That would be like, I'm cool. Like, I don't want you to see where I take pisses at sometimes. I know. <laughs> what, what if that's like the newest thing in the future, like cops app, where you just get to choose your, your district? Like, I want Los Angeles. Oh, you <laughs> need to like look through all the profiles. I was like, I want to see what this officer's yeah. doing right now. And, you're and like, you subscribe to it. It's like real cops. That's crazy, huh? Or like the cops send you a thing. I'm about to give you subpoena. This is me coming to your house. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> be ready by the third knock. <laughs> right. I, uh, Fucking Brian, you're crazy. That'd be a badass game. Think, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, you could choose your own cop to arrest you. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah, what if you got to choose which cop you wanted? Like, <laughs> that'd be so much better. Huh? I'll take a girl cop. Yeah, I want to get arrested by a girl cop. Uh, one that has a bad file like this. She hits people and sometimes <laughs> <laughs> takes them down the alley and does bad things. Have Brenda you ever, Rodriguez. Have you ever even met a girl cop off duty? I don't think I've ever actually <coughs> met a girl cop. I fucking fuck girl cops. That's my fucking no, favorite. Fuck yes. I got pictures. No, you don't. Yes, you I do. You fucked a girl cop? Yes. On parole once. Wow. What? Yes. <laughs> Dude, That's when you're a comedian, bro, you know how that is? It was crazy, oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because she was like, when I first seen you on stage, I don't know if I want to lock you up or fuck the shit out of you. But they're so controlling, man. They got fucking more testosterone than anything I've ever seen. But their pussies are warm as fuck. Warm? Warm. Incubator pussy. (laughs) Yeah. No, I'm talking like fucking super moist, moist, moist. Why? Why why does that have to do with that they're a cop? Mm. It's just like... I don't know. Something about like... Did you blow bubbles in it? The badge being by there and shit. Did you blow bubbles in it? Hell no. I ain't touching. I I don't kiss anything that has handcuffs next to it. Hello. Hello. Oh, I was just, Hello. but it was weird because like she turned me over. I was like, "You're gonna take this fucking pussy, fool!" And like she was like, she took the condom off. I was like, "Did what she the tell fuck you like? Doing? Did she tell you like, hey, uh, Perez, it's commissary day, motherfucker?" Nah, she was she, like in her head, she tripped out. She was like, "Are you a gang member? I think you're a comedian." I was like, uh, "No, these tattoos are because." My uncle practiced on me when I was little. Oh, this dude. <laughs> now, this is the weird part. Is the next day, she's like, hey, meet me at IHOP. Because I was doing a week in Texas. 
And then I go to IHOP and she's in full fucking uniform and everyone's looking at me like if I'm like a narc. They're like, what's this cholo doing with this fucking cop right now? <laughs> That's like, is this full of snitch? And I was like, let's get the fuck out of here. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Boss, you also uh, are in the uh, hoverboard or whatever they're called uh, <laughs> game. Uh, you, you know all about those things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sold a great deal of them since September up yeah. to now. Well, is there now? I I've always wondered: uh, is there one manufacturer that kind of makes it, and then like there's like all these like all right. generic versions let, of it? Let, or is let it, me just say this: let me just break it down for yeah. the world out there, because I'll hear I've sold tennis shoes, everything, and People go, oh, it's fake. It's a knockoff. It's a knockoff. Right. No, it's not a knockoff. And, 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 and Medellin and all these different foreign countries, they're not governed by copyright laws like us. Right. So when they have the, the, the product and they're making it for this particular company at this factory, mm -hmm. and then they get undersold by another factory that says, hey, well, we'll make you the same amount, but we'll make it for $10,000 less a month. And they take the contract and move it to the next factory mm -hmm. where the other factory still has materials and blueprints and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's no government there telling uh, them not to make it, correct? Right. Yep. So is it actually a knockoff? Is it, or is it just not? It's sponsored? not patent. Yeah, that's what I, that's what, and that's what I kind of thought. Like, I, I thought that's exactly what it was because, you know, you, there's, a, there's a couple websites you can go to and it, they, they well, have all like, that. All, all those that. are considered to be fake now because the guy from Razor bought the patent mm -hmm. from the Chinese people. Right. It's the guy from Shark Tank also is a part of it, I heard. <laughs> one of the guys from Shark Tank. Oh, from Shark Tank? Yeah. The, the, uh, I forget which one it was. Not tanked. Shark Tank. Shark Tank, yeah. You know that <laughs> Shark Tank. <laughs> it's from the shark putt hole. <laughs> it, it don't matter. Hey, hey, check this out. I don't give a fuck who owed it now. I done got my fair share of the pie. Right. Patty, patty, patty. <laughs> What now? What is? Is there different models or features on some of yes, them? Yes, like, yes, like what's, yes. Is it yes they have a okay. Let me tell you about it. They have a six and six and a half inch wheel, six and a half inches off the ground wheelbase. Mm -hmm. um, so you can all, go it off road. In, it little. comes in standard model and also comes in Bluetooth. Bluetooth where you just ha it has speakers at the bottom. It plays the music Bluetooth through the bottom of the board. Then they have an eight inch model, oh, which is a little bigger. The standing platform is better it's more sturdier and it's also to me better safer for especially for a younger child because it doesn't go as fast then they have a 10 inch wheel dynamiter yeah that's the 10 inch right there dude you're, hey that's my picture yeah. hey that's my house right there yeah that's the 10 inch right there baby i i saw i sold about about let me see probably about 80 of those things right there from between 400 to 700 bucks a piece just that model right there now that that one's the 10 inch one it's, it's the bigger wheels is bigger that, wheel it's, so it, it goes off road a little yeah more. i mean a bigger wheel just like a car if you're driving a honda and you hit a bump you're going to feel it a lot more right if you're driving a, a bronco and you hit a bump it's going to be a little less and now you're in a tahoe and it's a little less it's a lot yeah so do, there you go do any of them go faster than the, the other smaller one goes the fastest this the one, white one the white one yeah that's the six and a half inch wheel the blue one is eight and a half inch wheel and it actually is a little bit bigger uh foot base than the other ones uh, i like that one the blue one yeah i actually ride that one um it, i know that they work well none of mine have caught on fire or anything of that sort um, they have a 220 pound weight limit. Yes, I'm, I'm 310. I ghost ride my shit every day. That's what I was going to ask you because I remember when I was looking for, it, I was like, oh wait a second, I weigh more than those things can carry. But then I see people like Mike Tyson carrying dumbbells, and I'm like, what the fuck, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I've been riding my my one one since September, and I have no problems with it. Yeah, I guess it's the the, the biggest thing they found is, is there's some kind of battery issue or something like that. Or um, well, what it is is that the common the common thing of most people. I, I, I think, I don't know. I thought most of it was propaganda mm -hmm. because I sold about 400 of them. I had no it's, issues. It seems like, in my opinion, it would be propaganda. Uh, in propaganda. What, prop, prop. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. Propaganda. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. But, but because it, it, it happened right after the, 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 when I found out the Shark Tank guy bought, you it, know. It was it, propaganda. Yeah. Yeah, if you, I mean, I, I was selling them and you can come down downtown LA and they were on every corner like, like 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 the people selling the birds downtown and yeah the, and the and the uh shit with the red eyes the, the fucking what is those rabbits with red eyes rabbits the, yeah so and now you go you can't see them because you know now they'll get in trouble by the inspector so on and so forth but it don't matter i'm fully i'm fully loaded boss the comedian i got plenty of them none of mine catch on fire they all come with a 90-day warranty 
Um, that covers all mechanicals, battery, anything on the inside. You know, what I mean, it doesn't cover any of your physical damage from you falling and beating it up. Is there any? Is there a future? Like, is there like like the next model? Has it been announced yet? Like the next yeah, model goes. I, I actually have the, the new models, but they asked me not to sell them yet. <laughs> are, are, are you allowed Dang to say so. what what the differences are? Uh, actually, it's 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 just it just looks cooler. The the plastic is molded different. Mm. They come That's with they, they come with fire extinguishers. <laughs> Fool, don't be hating on my product. No, no, yours don't catch on fire. Just the cells are on fire no but it, it what i was going to say about that too is it has in the in the, in the, in the manual which most people don't meet, read manuals we know right. that it says just like most people don't know that you shouldn't leave your your new cell phone on a charger overnight yeah yeah it says charge for two to three hours right do not exceed three hours yeah so if you charge it overnight and you just said, fuck it, I'm going to leave it on all night. I fell asleep. And you unplugged it. And you rolled down the street. And that motherfucking battery hot. And that motherfucker, who fault is it? Yeah, I agree. And and, and one of the, the biggest things with the, these kind of companies is that uh, all the parts are all the same parts. You know, like like I need a battery. You mm-hmm. know, even if it's one battery, it's it's just renamed five different companies, you know, by the same battery. So it's, all, it's, it's I think... Yeah, there's been some, a lot of people, or there's a few people having these problems, but there's also been millions of these sold in the last yeah, month. I mean, fucking car, <laughs> hey, Dude. cars catch on fire. Every, you know what I mean? You can't be held accountable for that shit. And the, the, the kind of person that would buy one of these is the same kind of person that would have a cell uh-huh. phone to videotape them, you yeah. know, on these things. So that's how we know about them so much is, you know, social media. No, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. <laughs> Justin Bieber is what made these things famous. Justin, yeah. I, I had access at these things a year before they're out on the major market. Mm-hmm. Justin, they put a, a video up of Justin Bieber riding in one of the it casinos. Was a wrap. And as soon as they did that, the next day, they went from the, the wholesale guy had them for like 160 bucks. Wow. That's how much you could get them for. That fucking Justin Bieber row one, it went from 160 bucks to 300 bucks wholesale yeah. instantly yeah and then people were paying starting on 1200 bucks my first my first 10 i sold a thousand to 1200 bucks that's great and and i and i was only paying like 240 that's awesome that's a great profit margin especially oh, yeah. especially from just you know that do you find uh anything else that you on the horizon of that kind of you know thing uh, that's coming well up? really I'm, I'm more focused on comedy um right what it is a uh, um in the, in the mix of being a com- a comedian which all of us in here know because we work we're working comedians it's a rough road especially when you're trying to transition to bigger levels and making more money but in the mix of trying to make more money you're not making any money so this kind of gives me a, a a feather bed to work on and focus more on my company like i said i i finance my own shows where i bring out my own headliners like i've i've brung rodney perry michael blackson several times scruncho tk kirkland um i could just keep naming 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 i i fund those shows myself as a comedian to help build my brand in las vegas being that in vegas since we don't have culture outside of that strip you know what i mean the only way to get people to pay attention to you without kissing any ass is to do it yourself and that's what I do. So the money from this just helps fund, move my comedy career forward. That's what I really want to do next is making sure my kid's good. I just see something like those those hoverboards just pop out out of nowhere and it makes you just like, like I didn't, a lot of products like cell phones and things like that, you kind of see a small kind of like. Small rise. A small rise at first. It starts off with some roller skates, you know, or, or something like that. This just came out of nowhere. They got a 3D goggle. Yeah. Samsung makes it. A VR VR, it's called a VR goggle, some shit, and it's like you put it on, put your cell phone in the back of mm-hmm. it, and it turns your phone in like to like 3D and virtual, yeah, reality. virtual reality, and you can get a Bluetooth ring and play your games without actually touching your phone, and it sits on your face, and they're gonna be selling those things at like, uh, like around like like 300, 500 bucks. I'll be selling them in about a week for about 100 bucks. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> demolition man is like my truck's these... full right now, <laughs> Mr. Perez. Why I'm you bullshit? Cool. I'm cool, see, man. I'm old school. I, I like real shit. See what I think. <laughs> what I think is going to be cool is once the drone manufacturer teams up with the hoverboard manufacturers, and then you have your personal drone that just follows you around on your hoverboard, recording. No, they have that. So like you have something like this where, you know, you're just like. Hey, I'm just driving around going to 7-Eleven on my hoverboard. <laughs> oh, there's my person the drone. He's recording me in HD, Periscope. Yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> like, no, they have that. You see, CES 
the consumer electronics show just left Las Vegas. Yeah. And they have it now. They actually they used they let snowboarders and skiers use them first. Yeah. And uh, you program it, it. It links to your phone mm-hmm. in your pocket, or you can have the GPS in your pocket that comes with it. And uh, when yeah. you get ready to go, you just throw it in the air. And it launches by itself, and it follows you. Yeah, I actually know the video you're talking about. That's the one I was trying to find, but I saw this, found this weird one, so I thought I'd show this one. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, that's cool. I, I can't wait to have a personal drone. I think it's, you know, in the, obviously in the future, they're going to be really small, almost kind of like a hummingbird uh, that follows your, your own, like, you know, Google Glasses. Fuck Google Glasses when you have a hummingbird next yeah. year. You know? Fuck that hummingbird. <laughs> and, and then we're going to have you about to have a chip in your wrist. Don't worry about it. They're going to see all kinds of shit in a minute. Imagine your girlfriend gets you that phone and she wants to see what you're doing all day. She's oh. like, yeah, here you go. I'll pay the bill. Well, that's, that's what I thought was going to happen when FaceTime was announced, where it was yeah, going to like... Every like, phone call. Yeah, it was just going to be like, oh shit, now it's like, hey, where are you? Show me where you are right now. Yeah. Now it's almost to the point where it's rude to, to suggest that. Like, exactly. oh yeah. <laughs> and how to, how to become rude <laughs> that was just like hey too many motherfuckers were getting caught up and shit like we're no we're putting a stop to this <laughs> yeah we all or just... like or like you would, your girlfriend would have a different phone that didn't get facetime You're like sorry babe yeah so, but now girls join accounts and it's just i mean i'm not yeah. hiding nothing but i just like my whole freedom yeah that it is kind of cool how facetime barely ever works anyway so mm-hmm. it kind of is also like uh my no facetime here <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh do you do you uh, are you a big tech guy uh, outside of just do, you know messing with the hoverboards? Are you I like mean, a gamer or do you? Nah, not like that. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm a true comedian, so I don't really get you know if it's not you know financially something supportive. Right. Dealing with my kids, then it's it's comedy. Whether it's brainstorming with myself or have you ever done what? battles like like comedy battles or roasting roast battles? Would you um, ever do so, be up for something like that? Yeah, I, I love roasting, but um. There's two different kind of roasting. There's our kind of roasting, Mr. Perez, and then there's your kind of roasting, Red Man. Right. And, and it's completely different. Uh, you know, your red, your roasting is hada 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 boom. Our roasting is, you know what I mean? Nonstop headboard. Yeah. You know I mean, no, no setup, no, no, no punch. It's all punch. Bing, 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 bing. Right. So you know, I. I I, I want to do more of that type of roasting where they like to, what I would like to refer to as commercial roasting, but have you I, have you seen the roast battle at the comedy store every Tuesday? It's gotten pretty big. I, no, I haven't. It's one of the biggest shows in comedy, right? Yeah, it, it, we it's do the biggest show in Hollywood on a Tuesday. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we do uh, here at Death Squad. We do the uh, verbal violence, which is the podcast version of the roast battle. Uh, Wow. They do, and that show gets so many comedians opportunities. Dude, I was on Chappelle because of that show. That show got us. To, it's got Hinchcliffe's girlfriend on Chappelle. Ashley Barnhill. Yeah, Ashley Barnhill on Chappelle. Like a, a lot of comics come and watch, and they and they see the way you write, and they're like, "Hey, I'm gonna hook it up." I love that show. It's it's a great show. But I know what you're meaning too. Right. You no, I'm I mean? listening though. I appreciate but like, it. There you go. Once again, like you said, you're going to the store to cross over. Cross over there too. It's a fun. It's a fun world to balance both of those. Right. Because the opportunity that comes from that, and plus, it's just awesome. Brian Moses puts on a great show. You, you know what's weird is that it kind of the roast battle. You never really saw. That's something somewhat new. You know, yeah. like to comedy at least. You know, kind of like a battle on stage. I remember the first time I ever saw anything close to that because i was the one that recorded it was the joe rogan versus mar uh versus carlos Mencia. yes but you know it starts off kind of like you know an argument then it became kind of like a battle that's what i personally fucking think you always open your i love joe for this and then, and then the store shows how much they love him. Hey, that's only heckler. They're like, give him a mic. Give him a mic. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was really unfair to have one person. That's just showing to you that your interest in me is fucking retarded. But that was like a real battle. Like, you yeah. know, like, you know, that's that right. was not love. That was anger yeah. and fighting, which is what the kind of the opposite of the roast battle is it's it's supposed to be you know you battle who you love and you, and that that's the fun part but i've seen it go dirty yes. and where it was not it was not like those two people are going to be enemies forever yeah 
Do you, you enjoy that, George? You know what? I've been, I've been, I've done seven battles. I'm five and two. I lost to the two ranked number two people, and I just, it's fucking awesome, bro. Who's ranked number two? Fuck it. It's Alex Hooper and Joe Dosh. But Joe Dosh just lost to some one girl, and it's, it's going, dude. It's going to be in the Riot Festival, the Rose Battle. And it's awesome. It's a great every exposure. Tuesday. Every, every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. It's so I'll packed you can't even you can't yeah, even get in the room. Kick it with you guys. Yeah. Is that cool. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not there. I'm only there when I battle because I run my own room on Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying tight. to get Brian to come do it again. Yeah. You do it every every Tuesday in Orange, and you do it at this really cool bar where second all the base. second base where all the waitresses wear like <laughs> bikinis. Bikinis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Hot chicks. Yeah. How, how long have you been doing that that room? I've been there for five years. We just had our anniversary. What? Yeah, for five years every Tuesday. It's it's my hometown. I grew up literally four minutes walking from that bar. So it's it's cool because it's a bar. That's no fine. other bars around there, and it's just houses. So people walk. No one's getting a DUI. Some people. <laughs> Who said no one's getting I love it. Uh, no one's getting a DUI. I want to come. George, one of the cool, funny things about George is that he, you have this weird side of you that just loves old Nintendo games. Like, Fuck, it, dude, it, I love it, anything you, old. It, like, you collect. Like, you're, yeah. You, does your, is your bedroom look like a hoarder of a 12 year old hoarder? Or what's. <laughs> no, you know what's weird? I have like ADD cleanliness. So, like, I always move my games to places. Like, they were in my living room shelf. I'm like, fuck, it's clutter. So now they're in like my towel shelf. Then they're going to be in my closet like next month. I move them around, but. I, Dude, I got the I got the glove in the box. The box fucked up. The but, Nintendo Power Glove. Yes, I'm gonna bring it <laughs> when we're in Brea. <laughs> you should wear it on stage, and I'll wear my Pip Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Pit Boy from the uh, Fallout, which the uh, collector's edition, which is this big thing you put on your wrist and you put your cell phone inside of it. And there's an app that makes it like work, like a oh, real like Pit Boy and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. By the way, Tony, our boy Tony Hinchcliffe, his Netflix special comes yes, out. Yes, comes out, man. Netflix I'm excited tomorrow. about it. Yeah. You know, he's a hardworking, very funny man. He deserves it. <laughs> we had him on Joe Rogan yesterday, and it was funny because he's been eating meat lately, so I've been saying that he's getting a little butt. Like, I'm like, look, oh, you got a little butt now. Look at that little butt. And I, uh, and I go, I go, <laughs> Tony, show Joe your, your little tush so that you're making your tush. And he's like, Joe's like, Tony's like, okay. And he stands up, and Joe's like, what the fuck? I don't want to, what the... <laughs> That's pretty yeah, hilarious. Uh, fanny pump. I was uh, thinking about like new companies the other day, like like Uber and like uh, like this hoverboard company making and, mad and money, making mad money, and how like certain technologies like that are making money. Have you ever thought about? Have you ever been somebody that's like ever thought of an idea that you wanted to take it? to? Yeah, you know what? I I, I want to have like my own daycare center next to a strip club, like. And I'll like we'll we'll take the oh, kids to school, smooth. we'll pick them up, and then like on your hours in between, just come next door and say what's up, and then boom, they go home. What if the strip club used the same music as the daycare? Like, <laughs> you know, they had to like dance to like it's a bitsy spider. <laughs> That'd be so fucked up. Yeah, but I don't know. I think it would work. No, that's a good idea. I you mean, know? it's just kind of like how like companies always have, uh, you know, daycares. You know, like big corporations have daycares. You yeah. know, why not have one connected to where? Straight up. I mean, of course, your your strip club's a little different than most strip clubs because everyone's a single mom. I know. <laughs> I mean, most strippers are single mom. Say seventy percent of them. Really? Yeah. That big of a thing. Well, they're. I mean, they're single moms, but they got boyfriends. You know what I mean? Yeah. From what I know, I mean, I don't know. I don't think they tell me the truth all the time. Like you know. Did you hear that uh, SNL, uh, some alumni from uh, Fred Armiston and Horatio Sands uh, just uh, launched a comedy website for Latinos? Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I don't know, called. but I'm not Latino. Like I'm Latino, but I'm like my jokes ain't like Latino, Latino. Like, <laughs> you know, I don't go up there, but like, hey, you know, the tacos to the tortilla from us. <laughs> oh, that shit's funny. <laughs> like, that ain't my style. <laughs> like, Has was, that ever been that style? Like when you first started, were, were oh, you kind of like first, that? Dude, when I first fucking started, oh man, I used to be like, uh, what I used to say, I'm like, hey, my name is George Perez. I do not own a Lord Regal. A Lord Regal. It's a Monte Carlo. <laughs> like, I don't know. And then I remember I that's where I got this joke where I was like, I used to have this job at Baskin Robbins. And you know how that's 31 flavors where I would wear my apron inside out so it'd be 13. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, like, I, I used to rename all the ice creams. Like, instead of Rocky Road, I'd call it Whittier Boulevard. <laughs> instead of Rainbow Sherbert, I'd call it San Francisco. Sherbert. <laughs> you know, I don't know. 
yeah my early stuff was pretty sh- like Fuck just yeah. fucking awful I, I remember i had a joke about finding my old pager <laughs> and it was like a whole upside down thing like i found my old pager and wanted to call the, the last number that was on there and it was like church and then i was like why would i call church and then i was like oh never mind it just said boobies like it was like <laughs> like that was it was just I know, it was something dumb like that do you remember any of your first jokes you still uh my first joke was called uh it was i named it otd Oops. which stands for oven thought disorder that's a what I call fat people who thighs rub together and it's discolored. Sometimes it's real dark or sometimes it's flesh red. We talked about this last episode. And I, have you ever had those boils that you get on your legs? You no, know, like my legs don't rub. They don't rub? No. You got that gap. Yeah. That sexy gap. Now, oh, I, mean, I got big balls. <laughs> you built the gap. He going to say you got that gap, motherfucker. My legs don't rub either, man. <laughs> your legs don't rub together? No, nah, I mean, unless I sit down like a cholo like that. So, oh, like that. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to not, my, not have my lubs, lubs yeah. legs. My lubs legs. Your le- rubs you, I'm legs. telling you, you got that, like, mm. you have like a Brazilian bottom <laughs> torso, dude. Uh, this motherfucker. <laughs> For reals. Oh, oh that's, see, why, that's why your women. Your bottom ass from Rio. That's why that's why women call you mango thighs. Mango thighs. Mango thighs. <laughs> you better go to prison. Who was the first stand-up comedy that uh, comic that you saw that made you go? Wait a second. Um, the truth. Um, I truth? I never it <laughs> never <laughs> or, it never one. it never was a plan. Um, what happened was um, I wanted I had I had gotten to that that rut in life. And I wanted to do something, so I asked my, I have an attorney, so I asked my attorney to make me some release forms. I had bought a big Canon camera. I was going to go out on the strip, fuck with people, have them sign release forms, and put it out and see where it goes. And he was begging me, no, no, don't do it like that. Long story short, a little time went by. Got back together. He hooked me up with a, a, another comic, Mike P. in town. He took me to Diaz Mackey's open mic. I went up. They, they kept asking me to go up. They offered me money. I'm like, I don't want your money. I'll go up when I'm ready which I told them would be the following week. The following week I came, went up, gave them about four minutes of, of nervous motherfucker bitch hole, goddamn bitch motherfucker slut, suck my dick, good night. And they loved it, and I haven't, <laughs> I haven't looked back since. That's what's That's up. the truth. I, I, of course, like most people are going to tell you, as the, that's comics. I, people always told me I was funny and, and all that. I've always cracked jokes. I, I think I was the only, only senior in the history of seniors to – ever run a real campaign for class clown so on and so forth i tried comedy one day on the live stage and like i said i like that my what i like to say is nothing's been more consistent for me next to the love the love of my three children how, how is it having comedy. children is it was that the how long how, how old is your uh you? i have i have a thir- 14 year old daughter oh, wow. 12 year old son and then i have the baby you just met sincere he's 17 months do you like being a dad Oh, yeah, I love it, man. Being that my dad was a dad, but he wasn't a physical dad, of course, because he's been in prison for 34 of my 36 years. But, oh, geez. you know, for, for what he could do for his circumstances, he did a wonderful job at, you know, of course, he wasn't there. And we didn't get to play sports and catch and all that shit. But when I had trouble with, from from the situation that he was in, which I understand and respect, he helped like he could. But like I, I plan on, I, like I said, I teach my kids to be better than better than me because I know I'm better than him and that's all I focus on man like I I my kids are are suburban they don't they right. don't know shit about the ghetto they're, they're not going to yeah yeah they're not going to see nothing I see not uh, George you have 42 kids right god damn <laughs> I got 4 yeah I got 4 I got a 19 16 19 yeah. I didn't know you had a 19 yeah. Yeah. wait I, I didn't go to health class my senior year this fool She's legal. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> she got a boyfriend. Who? My nineteen? It's a boy, fool. <laughs> oh. It's a boy. My daughter's nine. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Is there bro- what's, what's your what's your son? My daughter's nine. What's your yeah. son into? Like, like is he into? He's like, cool. Huh? No, he's just a fucking. You know, he. I've raised him. I've had full custody of him since he was five. So oh. he's just he's. He's like my son and brother, you know? Both of my boys, we're real close. They're just cool-ass kids that uh, he likes to surf and skate, and he's trying to be in the fireman. Oh, wow. Yeah. No comedy. No, no. He's just like, hey, I'm cool with that. That's funny. Yeah. 
you should bring your kid sometime to the ice house. And I know whether well, he's he's going to be in Brea. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's tight. Yeah. You got to throw him on stage. You know what's crazy <laughs> is man, um, I was here like two weeks ago, and then he told me that he goes, "Hey, man, I just went to Death Squad at the Ice House Chronicles. And there's this dude up there with, with the same name as you, George." And my son was like, "That's my dad." And they're like, "No, it's not." So like, they're all going to come to the show, dude. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's fun. Uh, well, let's wrap this up. Uh, yes. Uh, me and George will be again in Brea on uh, January 22nd through the 24th. Uh, you can get tickets at improv.com for Brea. You know what? First, first, first 20 people that tweet it out get free, get four free tickets. Oh, wow. Look at Is that. That, that's for the Death Squad fans. Oh, that's awesome. What? Jesus yes. Christ. First, that's a lot of tickets. First 20 people that tweet it out. Get four tickets each because the shows are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we'll break it up in through there. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, what, you got anything else you want to promote or anything like that, George? Uh, I got a new podcast coming out February or early March. Oh, sweet. I'm doing something else. Yeah, it's called Just to Let You Know. And uh, yeah, it's coming soon. That's awesome. I didn't even know about that. Yes. And it's yes. George P. Comedy on Twitter. Boss, what, what do you, where are you at? Big you, boss. Oh, uh, man, I, um, I'm going to be back. In L.A. Uh, next week, man, I'm going to stay for a whole week, man, and see how much trouble I can get myself into. I've, this, this last 24, almost 48 hours has been wonderful for me, so I'm going to yeah. come out here. Next week, I got you at second base. Then Tuesday, I'll get you a spot, paid spot as well. All right. All I right. got you Bitch. Tuesday. Comics helping comics on your bitch ass. You need to get uh, back on Twitter. You have a Twitter. I, you just I, never I use it. I fixed it. I fixed it. Okay. Um, it's, my name is <laughs> Boss, B-O-S-S-D-A, ghetto, duh, comedian. All right, y'all look me up. Um, I'm about to flood you, you, your timelines and all that stuff with some funny videos. Uh, I'm more of a reserve comic because um, I know that the internet is a good way for us to use as a catapult out there. But at the same time, um, this is how I want to feed my family so I don't just flood the internet with, with, with my material. So when you get it, accept it and enjoy it. Um, that Patty LaBelle pie video got 760,000 views. Damn. And, and like 24 hours and and I swear to God I didn't make it for no views I made it for the to two or three thousand Facebook friends I have and in 48 hours it went crazy um, I don't think it's it's a big deal but I didn't get a nickel off each view so it don't mean shit to me it's time to move on to the yeah, next one that's right all right guys thank you for uh, watching what Brian Redman do don't forget to check out me and George in La Brea California and don't go forget about shopsquad.tv we got the new shirt uh, and it, we'll be putting some in stock this weekend all right guys thank you very much see ya good night Okay, Swear you what a evil is. Just because I was 14 wearing a 46. My lunchbox was a duffel bag with a zipper on it. One time I robbed a hostess truck for a case of donuts. I brought them all to school. My teacher tried to make me share. I grabbed a white girl and a pencil and put it to her hair. And yelled, everybody just back away from my donuts. Especially the powder ones. Touch them and I'ma go nuts. I grabbed the bag and walked backwards to the door slowly. I started screaming, don't you judge me. You don't even know me.